The date was April the 3rd, 1919. The location was the Southside Pavilion in sunny Jacksonville, Florida. The occasion was a much hyped competition of gastronomical strength between Ping Bodhi, the 5 foot 8 and 190 pound New York Yankee outfielder, versus the world's greatest eater, an ostrich named Percy. They were to engage in a spaghetti eating contest to determine once and for all who was Earth's most prolific eater, man or ostrich. But before we recap how Bodhi fared when he went beak to beak with his feathered foe, let's see how we got here. To how a baseball player named Ping Bodhi faced an ostrich in a spaghetti eating contest. Ping Bodhi was actually born Francito Sangranita Pizzolo to an Italian American immigrant family in San Francisco on October the 8th, 1887. There seems to be several different tales on how Francito earns the name Ping Bodhi. Bodhi himself once said that the name had come from a family friend who had been nicknamed that but didn't like it and pawned it off on little Francito. Other stories claim that he received the nickname because that was the sound the ball made as it came off his mammoth 52 ounce bat, though, of course, wood bat don't make that noise, so we'll trust Francito on that one. As for the surname Bodhi, Ping's brother Dave explained in a February 1912 letter to the editor of the magazine Sporting Life that Ping wanted to change his name to something less ethnic because he felt that he was going to be ridiculed. After all, he was one of the first Italian Americans to reach the major leagues, so he chose Bodhi, the name of a silver mining town known for its saloons and gunfights that his father and uncle lived in for a time. W. O. McGee and the famous New York Herald Tribune sports writer, who also originally hailed from San Francisco claimed that Bodhi built up his strength at an early age by rolling heavy rocks down Telegraph Hill to, to quote him, keep their territory free from invaders. Ping was a slugger from the start, beginning his professional baseball career in the California League in 1908 and then joining the legendary San Francisco Seals. This team he joined in 1909. He was called up by the Chicago White Sox in 1911 when the owner, Charles Comiskey, complained the Sox weren't hitting. Bodhi went into his office and told him, you want some hitting? Put me in the lineup. He did, and Bodhi hit, earning him the nickname Fence Buster. He soon clashed with the White Sox manager and was traded back to the Seals before finding his way to the Philadelphia A's, where he once told the press that the A's were so bad that I and the Liberty Bell are the only attractions in Philadelphia. Always modest, he was finally traded to the New York Yankees. As you might have guessed from all of this, Bodhi was naturally gregarious and loved being the center of attention. So he paired up with another larger-than-life personality as a roommate, Babe Ruth. The babe was already by then well known for his tendency to hit the town, including some rather legendary marathon sessions at brothels. So when a reporter asked Ping what it was like to room with the biggest star in the game, his response was honest. I room with his suitcase. He's also credited as being the inspiration for the ball player in the book and eventually the comic strip You Know Me Al by Ring Lardner. The book consists of letters written by a fictitious White Sox pitcher named Jack Keefe to his friends. In the letters, he reveals to Al all the shenanigans that went with being a baseball player and his obliviousness to the fact that he was being taken advantage of by everyone around him. Now let's move on to Percy, who was probably Jacksonville's most famous ostrich. He had been touted by the Jacksonville Chamber of Commerce as the world's greatest eater, likely as a way to promote the city's zoo. In fact, Jacksonville was in the middle of its run for the winter film capital of the world. Before Los Angeles became the center of movie production, silent movies were filmed either in New York during the summer months or Jacksonville, Florida in the winter. Its warm climate, exotic-looking locations, rail access, and cheap labor encouraged over 30 silent film studios to be established in the Northeast Florida City during that time. Additionally, Jacksonville had been home to spring training baseball since 1898, and the residents loved having the ballplayers in town. So when the co-owner of the Yankees, Colonel T. L. Cap Huston, heard that the city was touting their long and slender ostrich as the best eater in the world, he knew they would play along when he offered up a challenger in the form of Ping Bodhi. The match wasn't widely advertised due to fear that it would arouse anger from animal lovers, but by all accounts, the local Jacksonville Hall was packed with spectators for the event. Bodhi, given that he was the challenger, was allowed to choose the food. Percy raised no objection. Bodhi's choice was spaghetti. Members of Jacksonville's Chamber of Commerce, who had wagered quite heavily on Percy, did not like this pick. After the first three bowls, man and ostrich were neck and neck. It was said that Percy gobbled his bowl of spaghetti with such gusto that he accidentally swallowed the manager's pocket watch and chain while the manager was timing him. By the fourth bowl, Percy's sides had begun to swell visibly. At the sixth bowl, newspaper accounts noted several female spectators supposedly headed for the exit, not wanting to see what would happen to the poor bird. By the eighth bowl, it was becoming clear that Bodhi was going to win the battle. But still, the bird kept going. 
During the tenth bowl of spaghetti, a spectator supposedly yelled, Do you want your bird killed? Finally, as Percy ate his eleventh bowl of pasta, he stopped eating, staggered off, and collapsed. Bodhi finished his bowl, emerging the victor, supposedly stating, When the timekeeper counted to ten, the ostrich keeled over, never to rise again. The ostrich sadly supposedly died. Of course, whether that's exactly what happens, or whether the victory was embellished by those who covered the event, is up for debate. For instance, we're going to make a wild guess here and say that Percy probably didn't eat the manager's watch. And it also seems odd that the ostrich would choose to eat itself to death rather than just stop when it was full up. But, you know, an ostrich staggering away and keeling over does make for a better story than one that simply stops eating. For reference, ostriches typically eat about 8 pounds of food per day, processing it in their three stomachs, including a gizzard, which seemingly would have little trouble grinding up pasta. The gizzard can hold at any given time about 2 to 4 pounds of food, nearly half of which is generally rocks and sand used for grinding the food. They also aren't super picky about what they eat, consuming plants, seeds, roots, insects, and small animals. Pretty much whatever plant or animal they can fit in their gullet. Whether the ostrich actually died from the event or not, reports do agree that Bodhi won. This is possibly to do more with the lack of competitive spirit in the ostrich than Bodhi's stomach being able to hold more. But perhaps the massive amount of pasta really didn't agree with Percy's digestive system in some severe way. Given that ostriches can eat grains just fine, this does seem unlikely, though. If you're an ostrich expert, do feel to chime in in the comments below. Now, Bodie made his last major baseball appearance with the New York Yankees in 1921. He played for several more seasons for his hometown Seals until retiring for good and moving south to Los Angeles. He became a Hollywood electrician, mostly on the Universal lot, and even dabbled in acting in a few films. He was also rumored to be friends with many members of Hollywood royalty, including Carol Lombard and John Chaney Jr. To the day he died in 1961, he still loved talking about how he could whale the old apple and smack the old onion. Presumably, this means hitting a baseball. But to others, he will always be known as the ball player who beat an ostrich in a spaghetti eating contest. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out one of our other videos linked to on the screen now? And as always, Thank you for watching.